All right, all right, kid. You're testing campaigns, profitable. You're getting a little shmoney in your pocket. You're getting a girlfriend, and now you think you're a big shot. But let me ask you something. How you actually plan to scale that past a few nickels and dimes? I'm talking that real Monopoly money. Oh, you think you can just dupe your audiences at a higher budget? And the TikTok money machine won't stop printing, huh? Well, I got news for you, kid. That's not how this game is played. So as you guys read in the title, today we're going to talk about every conceivable way that you can scale your TikTok ads for your e-commerce brand from a low budget of $100 all the way up to $7,000 a day. And to give you a little bit of proof to show that I'm not just blowing smoke out of my ass here, you can see that I took this brand new store from zero to $1,100 in revenue on the first day all the way up to $7,000 on day four of TikTok ads. So these strategies do work. I have my own ad agency where I'm scaling TikTok ads for e-commerce brands literally all the time. In fact, my recent video is a case study on this store right here that we took from zero to 1300. And then we have other stores like this one right here that yesterday, January 11th, did $1,100. So again, we've been doing this time and time again, and I'm about to reveal to you all of our favorite scaling strategies. Now, before we get into scaling, we do need to talk about some baby steps here into how to actually test your product on a budget. So when we're actually setting up a campaign, I typically like to do one campaign, five ad groups and two to three ad creatives. So let me just hop into my computer and set up a quick test campaign so you can actually see what that looks like. All right, so don't mind all this data here. August 28th, oh, look at that. $1,800 spent 6,300. That doesn't seem right. It looks like we actually did $7,000. Come on, TikTok, you need to improve your tracking, am I right? Uh, uh, uh. But let's actually set up a campaign. So these are all the settings that I really like when I'm setting up campaigns. Now, first off, make sure you click conversions twice because it will reset back to traffic even after you click conversions. And that's a big mistake I see a lot of people make. So when you scroll down, when it comes to naming campaigns, I do it the same way every single time. So I'll do the name of the product. If I'm selling this cool custom bobblehead of myself as dude from Free Guy, then I would just name it free guy bobblehead and then whatever the profit margin is so let's say for this product it's forty dollars so it cost me fifty dollars to make and I'm selling it for 90 not the greatest margin or pricing examples but you get my gist so basically if we spend forty dollars to get the sale we're breaking even now when we're going over here to our settings just select whatever pixel you already have tied to your account if you don't know how to set up a TikTok account I do have a video where I walk you through that so go check it out but once you have a TikTok pixel i always will do complete payment it's always about the shmoney it's about the moolah and i know some of you guys don't like money you don't have that money mindset you just think it's all about materialism but you know what money can also bring good things in life it can bring health it can bring higher status you can just bring a lot of better stuff so you know you got to learn to appreciate money because that's what it's all about so when we're scrolling down Let's go to location. I always only do United States nowadays. I used to preach doing Canada as well. I just have noticed in my product tests, usually United States is the way to go. And especially with how cheap these CPMs are, and I'm talking 10X cheaper than Facebook, it's just a cheat code for your ads just to go all in on United States. They got the most disposable income and a lot of idiots that love spending money on impulse. So while that's the case, you might as well take advantage of it. I mean, sometimes people just have too much money laying around and they don't know what to do with it. So they might as well buy your product. So when we're scrolling down, I don't really play around with gender unless I know specifically this product is for one gender. So if it's like a hairstyling product, 100% go female. If it's a construction done for you type of product where it's more DIY, definitely go all males. But in general, I like to do all. And then for age, I do 18 to 55 plus. I am never advertising the 13 to 17 because put yourself in your shoes there. When you were in high school, did you really have any money? Did you even have a credit card? Did you even know what a 401k was? Probably not. So you're most likely, if you're seeing an ad and you're that age, you're just asking your mom and dad, hey, can I please get this? I promise I'll do my chores. I promise I'll get an A in Mr. Miyagi's math class. Yeah, it's not a great sell. So advertise to people that actually have a little bit of money first off. Now scrolling down, you'll notice that I have a few key interests that TikTok recommends to me. Now I personally actually do use these. I think TikTok, it does a really good job of giving you interests that are profitable. So usually when I get these recommendations, I'm selecting all. But when you have a new account and you're setting up your first ever campaign and TikTok doesn't know what the hell you're selling, then they're not going to give you these recommendations. So really realistically, what this will look like is you need to pick one main interest right here and then a side behavior interest. You need that side chick interest 
to really differentiate what audience and what segments are working the best. Let's say I'm selling a massage gun. We're gonna look for something that applies to fitness, people that are really big into their health. So if I'm going down here, sports and outdoors, that makes a ton of sense. We're scrolling back up. Yeah, sports and outdoors seems to really get that point across. Now, if we're going down, I'm looking for fitness. I'm looking for CrossFit. I'm looking for vegans that won't shut up about how they're vegan. Let's see here, sports and outdoors again. I do sometimes double dip a little bit. I don't do that with my chip game, but sometimes with my interest, I will do stuff that's very, very similar. So fitness and health, 1 million percent. That's how I do it. And when it comes to naming, I'll just copy these, move them on up just like this. This is how I name all my ad groups. And then I believe fitness and health was the other one. Look at that spelling, just precise. But when we're scrolling on down, uh, device, don't worry about targeting expansion. Turn that B off. It's not worth your time. Scrolling down, budget. Nowadays, I'm doing 25. I used to teach do 20, but I noticed sometimes you can have spending issues when you're literally doing the bare minimum with your budget. So 25 seems to be the best point of getting that spend to actually work. Because a lot of times the biggest problem you'll have when you're testing products is your ads just aren't spending. So 25 is a good bid in my opinion. So if we're scrolling on down, I do all day, but we will talk about day parting a little later in this video. And you're probably saying, oh my God, what the hell is day parting? That sounds a little too advanced for me, Ethan. I don't know anything about ads. I just need to copy exactly what you're doing. That's how I do all of these videos. I just go on YouTube, copy the settings, and don't have another thought in my head about any other settings that could possibly work for me and making me more money. And you gotta get out of that box. You're smarter than you realize. Honestly, I'm a 20 year old kid that has been e-commerce for three years. Not a lot of time here. I just like to play around with stuff and that's why I get good results. Now, if we're scrolling down here, you're gonna put your custom identity, which is the name of your brand. Now, I'm not even gonna blur this out. This is actually the name of the brand right here that is doing 7K a day. I'm no longer running it, so I'm not really you know, worried about it. So you can actually visit this website, myslimwaste.com. So if you wanted to see what I was selling to seven grand a day, there you go. And then the next step is I typically will have about two to three ads in each testing campaign. That seems to be the golden number. You don't wanna have less than two. You don't wanna only rely on one because if that winning ad is a flop, you're gonna blame the product and you're gonna say, oh, the product sucks, when really it's just because you didn't split test enough. You never know what angle is gonna work, what hook is gonna work, and what's gonna resonate the most unless you do split testing. And in a lot of cases, I will test three, four, five, even six ads in one campaign at a time. TikTok's really good at distributing the money and finding out what's working. And you can really identify it once you spend for a couple of days. So let's upload some ads that are already on my library here. So I believe it's gonna be this main waist trainer. And as you can see, I split test a lot with different ads and they all look very similar because they have the same opening clip, but I'll split test very tiny minute things. And we'll talk about this later on in the video when you have a winning ad creative, how you can split test and make new creatives without really having to do much work. But let's say we do this ad, we'll do this ad, and we'll do this ad right here. Click on confirm, bada bing, bada boom. So all three ads will appear right here on the right. Now you do need to do uh, ad copy. This doesn't matter whatsoever. I would say this accounts for 0.001% of your actual success and 99.999% is your actual creative. So make sure all of your focus is on this. I really don't put much stress into this. I literally will just do the name of the product, which is this right here. I'll do whatever the percent off sale is. I think for this product, it's like 60% off, but make sure you know exactly what it is. Because if you say in your ad copy, the product's 50% off, and then in your video it's 60, TikTok will reject your ad. They will say it's an outdated promotion, and this has happened to me. So every single time you mention a sale on your website, on your ad copy, on your video, make sure they all align, because if one thing is off, it gets rejected. It's happened to me, it's a pain in the ass. So let's see right here what I have actually on my website. So we'll actually take a look at the product page. So we're gonna scroll on down. Again, this is a product that I've been scaling for the last couple of months. So 40% off is the deal I'm going with. So we're gonna do that 40% off sale ends soon. I always do sale ends soon. I've noticed that if you do sale ends today or sale ends on Monday, TikTok is so freaking smart. They actually have humans looking at your ads and they will reject your ad and say it's an outdated promotion if you say the sale ends today and hey, you've been running this ad for a couple of days. So clearly either someone's lying or my cap detector is going off the roof. So you got that. Next step is going to be shop now, exclamation and boom. That's all you really need to do for your ad copy. I just copy this on over, paste it into each ad just like this because you have to. Now make sure obviously that you have your custom identity and you made this. If you don't know how to, 
literally just click create new custom identity you upload your logo and make sure you have the name of your brand here because if this doesn't match with your website or the landing page that you're sending people to your ad's gonna get rejected TikTok is so freaking smart so you can't put Britney Spears or BTS or your own name or Riley Reed because it will get rejected you silly Billy so when we're scrolling down I don't really play around with dynamic whatsoever I do standard I do shop now I'm boring you can say you know whatever it is and then I just copied the product page link so we're gonna go back here paste that and you need to do that for each three ad because it does not carry over so you just do this then for the first ad standard bada bing bada boom and just like that click on submit and your campaign is ready to go except we need to make a few more ad groups so typically how we would like to do it is you can either do four ad groups for a hundred dollars a day or you can duplicate this four times and have five ad groups in total spending 25 so if you do the math that's 125 dollars a day that's personally what i do prefer again that seems to be just the sweet spot for us to get these ads actually spending some money and if they are working that's a pretty decent budget as well so we're gonna scroll on down. We got our four duplicates. You don't need to really change around anything. Just move on to next. And then you're just gonna click save on the ads because you've already made them. They're just duplicated on over and they're gonna show to each one of our audiences. So let's just click on submit. And now the final step is just to edit the side chick interest, the secondary interest in each one of these ad groups. So that's something a little different. And we're also gonna do something cool in one of these ad groups. Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? So we're editing our first ad group right here. So again, all you're doing is changing the secondary interest. So let's say for instance, we don't wanna do fitness and health, but we wanna do something pretty related. So I'm thinking lifestyle makes a lot of sense. Performance also makes a lot of sense. Actually not that kind of performance. You know, if it was like your actual health and your exercise, yeah, I could see it. Let's see, food and drink. I could see people that are interested in foods and drinks, like healthy foods and drinks would be interested in a fitness product. So let's do something like that. So we'll do food and drink, move that on up. And again, you do have to think a little bit outside the box because this isn't like Facebook, where if you're selling a fitness product, you can literally look up the word bicep or you can look up some professional bodybuilder or protein, hey, <laughs> hey, protein, and find all the creatine dumb jock heads that have no brain cells in their head and they'll buy whatever fitness product or new invention that is great for your home gym that you're offering it just isn't that sophisticated yet but give it a year honestly technology will really blow you away when you give it some time so when we're going to our next ad group let's add a little bit of a twist this is something that has performed incredibly well for me because of how smart tiktok's algorithm is especially when you already have some data on your pixel so if we scroll on down let's do an ad group with no interest literally nothing no targeting just call it no targeting i've seen this work extremely well to the point where i've scaled some of these audiences to 200 dollars a day which is pretty nuts from an initial starting budget of 20. so that definitely does work i would always recommend having one of your ad groups being no targeting just play around with it if after four to five tries it just has never worked for you okay don't ever do it again but it's worth split testing to see what your results are going to be you never know until you try that's really the motto with ads. You throw stuff at the wall and you see what sticks. I do it all the time. I'm always split testing different ad strategies. In fact, this is a different ad strategy than the one I recommended a few months ago because it's always evolving, especially when you learn more and you realize how TikTok really operates. Scrolling down to this fourth ad group. Let's do something as a video interest. Let's scroll on down. Fashion and beauty, food and beverage, fitness and health. Yes, we can do fitness and health. Again, I have no problem doing fitness and health but this time it's a creator interest. So I usually will label this creator just so I can differentiate if this is a video behavior or a creator behavior. So that means someone that is interested in fitness and health creators, they actually follow them on TikTok. That's that audience right there. Now, if you're ever curious what like the general audience size I'm looking for is, I like to have audiences that are between 20 million to 150. That seems to be my golden range when testing. I don't want anything smaller than 20 million. I just know it typically doesn't spend that well. And I get a lot of issues when it is lower than that. So as we can see right here, 102 million is definitely within my golden range. I'm totally cool with that. Scrolling on down, is there anything else that I would wanna hit? So again, I always do watch till end, 15 days. That's a pretty solid window of someone interacting with content related to whatever interest I want. 
entertainment, beauty and style, lifestyle. I can see daily life being one thing for sure. Yeah, daily life, that's a good interest. That's actually a little bit of a hack. I noticed you can pretty much use daily life for almost any product and it will work. Again, try it out, see if it works for you. But that's my favorite interest. Usually that is just something that can be applied to everything. So click on save and boom, you have a campaign here, $125 a day and now Let's get into the next step. Now, after you publish this initial campaign, usually TikTok will have it under review for a couple hours and then everything will get approved. All right, so once you publish your campaign, hopefully it doesn't look like this because I understand it looks like a freaking war zone. It's World War II out here with errors and bombs and TikTok telling me that I'm basically trying to poison everyone. I know, I'm basically a TikTok ad terrorist, it seems like. But that's the reason why I'm no longer selling this product. Waste trainers are just, I don't know why. TikTok really hates them. They consider it a weight loss product and I was fighting tooth and nail because my bank account depended on it. But yeah, they don't like it. You do wanna obviously find a product that first can be approved and you need to be reading on what's prohibited and what you can actually sell. But once you have a campaign like this that is approved, if you do have the budget, you can also create a new campaign in the testing phase that is day parted. Now day parted is something we are definitely split testing at my agency and seeing some really great results. I would say 66% of our tests initially with a product that has no sales, we actually noticed that the day parted campaign performs a lot better than a campaign that's running all day. So what the hell does day parted actually mean? Well, let me show you real quick. So if we were to make two different campaigns and we're split testing all day campaigns versus day parted, Let's just go right here, click new campaign, and we'll name this day parted. So I'm gonna make this really easy for you to understand because that's my job as a teacher. And I know for me, because I'm stupid, I'm usually able to dumb down things to everyone's level. And that's why I'm getting a decent amount of traction on YouTube. So if we scroll on down, we have our new campaign. As you can see, it's now showing us our ad group that we wanna make. And basically the only change you're gonna make, scroll on down to day parting. Now this basically means you can tell TikTok when you want your ad to be shown. So I can tell TikTok, hey, on Monday, I only want you to show my ad to the early birds. Just show it from this time frame here and you can drag it and it'll show all these boxes. So as you can see from 6 to 8.30 a.m., TikTok will only run my ad during that period. It will only spend my $25 budget right then and right there. But if it's all day, then TikTok is basically spreading out your budget all freaking day from midnight of the day before all the way to midnight at the current day. So that makes a huge difference because obviously sometimes then your budget will be spent during 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. And obviously it's cool to see sales when you wake up. That's what we all dream of. We're like making money in our sleep. That's the motto. But really, a lot of times you're gonna notice your money can be spent a lot better obviously when people are freaking awake. So a good frame of reference, in my opinion, or at least a good practice with day parting is usually on all days, do something from six to midnight. So we're just gonna get rid of all this, click on this, drag it on out, boom, and there you go. So you got it from 6 a.m. to midnight. Now, when it comes to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you guys are night hawks. You guys go out, you club a little bit, you're on your phone, sometimes it makes some impulse decisions while you're heavily intoxicated, just slamming down screwdrivers or whatever kind of beverage that you prefer the most. You know, I used to drink vodka Red Bull. That was actually my drink back when I lived in Spain. And yes, it was legal. I was 18 back then. I mean, I don't really like alcohol that much. I just noticed it tastes like piss to me. I mean, I don't know why people like it. I get it's like liquid courage or whatever, you know, it helps you talk to the honeys. But man, just get some confidence, you know? Just believe in yourself a little bit. And I'm also really good at making a fool of myself and just letting loose on the dance floor without being heavily intoxicated. In fact, you can probably tell that by watching these videos, but this is what we like to do on the hours during weekends. So I like to run my ads from right here, zero to 2 a.m. You can copy this, take a photo on Friday from zero to 2.30, and then Saturday from zero to 4.30, pretty much almost all day on Saturdays. And then basically all you're gonna do after that is click next, click publish, and you're gonna do the same exact thing as that original campaign where you're just gonna recreate the other audiences that you made. So the daily life one, the fitness one, the food and health, all that stuff, just make them over again. And the only difference is that you decided to tell TikTok, hey, run my ads during these times instead of all day. And if you're really on a budget, what I would recommend is just do three ad groups that you think are gonna be the top performing ones that had the most likely chance of being successful. And then real quick, we can just delete these other two if you don't like them. And you'll just go with three ad groups, $75 in one campaign, 
And then in the other campaign that's day parted, the exact same three ad groups, $75 a day and the same ads. Now, I don't care how good your product is or how amazing of a media buyer you are. If your ad creative sucks, you are never gonna be able to scale a winning product. So we need to cover how you can actually make a winning creative. The first thing in my eyes, and this is really the mindset that you need to approach this with. On TikTok, it's unlike any other platform. On other platforms, yes, ads that are look like ads and are speaking like ads and are scripted like ads do perform very well. But on TikTok, it's always about user-generated content. It's about ads that disguise themselves as TikToks. And the only way you can really do that is by following trends, using the same types of music, same types of text, and even trying out the text-to-speech feature that's very native to the platform. But the first thing that I would always tell beginners in the e-commerce game that are trying to get into TikTok is try to gather as much user-generated content as possible for your product because it will always drive the most click. So you really need to take your mindset off of trying to create these professional Facebook ads. You see it all the time for clothing brands or when you're watching a TV show and you see a fragrance and it's literally nothing about the product. It's about selling the lifestyle of luxury, going to fancy yacht parties with the most elite bachelors out there. And at the end of the commercial, they're spraying the fragrance that some weird French name like De Poe get yours today. Yeah, that just doesn't work on TikTok. In fact, if you try to repurpose this beautiful million dollar ad onto TikTok, it would pale in comparison to you literally grabbing your phone, talking about your product, modeling it a little bit, and that would literally perform better. So the number one way to create a profitable TikTok ad for your e-commerce brand is always going to the TikTok Creative Center, like you can see right here, and studying the competition, seeing what's trending, seeing what's working, because it's really hard to come up with an idea on your own that's completely unique that's gonna work the best. So again, look at what your competitors are doing. And personally, the trends that I know is performing the best is always is going to be someone demonstrating the product or they might literally do the reverse story angle and if you don't know what that is that's usually just starting your video at the end so you'll have someone filming their whole journey of using their product it might be a lip plumping device where they're putting it on and then at the end oh my god my lips they're so big and that's where you start the ad so you start it when they're saying oh my god my lips are so big let me show you how i did this and that's usually always going to be the transition to showing the beginning of the video let me show you how i did this let me show you how i got this benefit let me show you how you can try this out so that's really that simple and then boom you just show the rest of the ad have a call to action and you're good to go a lot of ads like to do that. So if we're looking at this ad right here for this fragrance brand, let's just- The new Anita body fragrance from Sol de Janeiro is phenomenal. Every time I wear it, I get compliments. I absolutely love wearing it. It's very light. I love her hair, by the way. The purple looks really nice. So if we're really trying to get what are they doing here, they're demonstrating the product. We have a user who clearly doesn't seem very affiliated with the brand. But then again, that could be the CEO for all I know. But it looks like just a typical influencer just talking about a product that they like. They're demonstrating it. They're unboxing it as well. So you can see what that looks like. And it's a really solid ad. There's a lot of good benefits and I'm sure they have a great call to action. So again, it can literally be that simple where you can grab your product, grab your phone, talk about the benefits and give them a call to action at the end of the ad. Whether that's, hey, we have a limited supply available on these fragrances, go get yours before we sell out. Or hey, we're running a 40% off sale for all people that are coming from TikTok. Click the link right here and get your 40% off. Or you can do a discount code ad. We're in the ad at the end. You have a code like TikTok30 to save 30% off your order. It could literally be that simple. So let me see if I can find one more ad here that uses one of our typical formats. Now, if you're looking for inspiration for your TikTok ad, I really don't believe there's a better brand than Fabletics. They're just crushing it right now. They do a good mix of user-generated content. They'll have demonstrations. They'll have call to actions. They have literally everything. They have a perfect framework and they have so much content available that they're literally just splitting clips from all of these different videos into one ad it's just a giant hodgepodge but it works incredibly well so let's take a look at one of their ads boys listen up these are the hottest thing you can wear great hook immediately if i'm a guy and i want these shorts yeah a girl telling me that this is gonna attract women i'm sure is gonna pique my attention so the hook i can guarantee they've tested this a million times and you can definitely test different hooks like Amazon made me buy it, TikTok made me buy it, or hey, I found the perfect gift for your boyfriend if I was advertising this to women. So there's a lot of different caption ideas, but those are by far the most popular ones. But let's watch the rest of this. 
and they're 70 percent off right now all right these shorts boom 70 percent off in the first five seconds we know what the product is we already know what the offer is we got a benefit that's a hook as well i mean geez louise that's amazing have been out for a long time and everyone's in love with them and now i understand why they are made out of this high quality stretchy material that wicks off sweat and it's anti-stink so you're always going to be smelling fresh and feeling confident next again the listing features but they're telling you the benefits so it's anti-wick what the hell does that mean john wick isn't going to be able to wear these no it's because he won't stink boom tells you exactly why that matters and that's what you need to do in your ad you can't just talk about a feature without telling them the benefit what's the practical application why does that matter next the fit they have the perfect amount of stretch and they have five inch inseams so you're always going to be looking stylish again five inch inseams why does that matter because the ladies love it of course they even have this clutch deep pocket so whether you're working out out on the town whatever your valuables are always going to be safe they got tons of colors too. So whatever you're looking for, they most likely have it. So fellas, dudes, men, boys, these Fabletic shorts are absolutely worth the hype and they are 70% off. So don't sleep on them. That is boom. Call to action at the end. And look at this chart. As soon as he mentions that, look at the CTR. Boom. As soon as he mentions 70% off, people are clicking. They're watching the whole entire ad and they're clicking right at the end because you need to tell them what the offer is and why they should get in now. Now, two key variables that you can implement to make your TikTok ads profitable are using familiar music to the TikTok ad platform, along with the usual text-to-speech narrator voice. I've seen the woman voice perform the best by far because it really makes it feel like your ad is a TikTok. So right now we're on my phone and this is just a cool ponytail beanie that I tried to sell. I made a few sales with my agency for this client, but it didn't really scale. So I'm cool with showing you the ad. Now, as you can see right here, our hook is stay fashionable and comfy all season long, all winter long. Honestly, we want to do all season so that can be sort of applicable to other seasons besides winter, but that's besides the point. So I am right now on an account that is not a business account. It's just a normal personal account. And the reason why is because you get access to all of the trending sounds compared to just the boring commercial corporate sounds that TikTok gives you. So here we go. Going to sounds, going to favorites. Use this audio if you're gay. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding, but let's get a search. Oh, I hope my girlfriend doesn't watch this video, but if we're scrolling down, TikTok viral is where you're going to see a lot of the popular sounds and the popular songs. So I would love to play these, but obviously this video is going to get copyrighted and YouTube's got to cut me that check, cut me that video child support. But that's how you can access all of these super popular sounds. And a lot of the times when you're clicking on the sounds, TikTok will actually recommend great music based on what your video is about. I'm pretty sure they just read the subtitles and the captions and they're just like, okay, this is a winter theme product. Here's some winter theme songs. So it's really, really easy to use. And you can go down here, there's different categories. So you can just choose what works for you the best. But now let's do something like adding the text to speech. So if we do this, all we have to do to have the narrator is stay fashionable and comfy all season long. Uh, let me do the ampersand all season long. Have the narrator read it. Stay fashionable and comfy all season long. Sounds great. Now, obviously I don't wanna have double text, so I'm just gonna drag this on down. Boom, click next, go back. Stay fashionable and comfy all season long. And that's how you get the narrator. It's that simple. Now, if you wanted to do it for the next benefit in your video, let's just do that because I know it can be a little bit tricky. So keep your hair perfect. And then we'll do the narrator. Keep your hair perfect. Oh, 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 ladies, ladies, one at a time. Jeez Louise. So all you have to do to edit the duration, if I go back here, you just click on the text, click on set duration, then scroll. So if we're scrolling here, the keep your hair perfect benefit comes up around four seconds, 4.1. Now I don't actually have the text appear on screen at 4.1. I usually do it 0.1 seconds earlier because there's a little bit of a delay that I noticed with the narrator. But once you do that, minimize the text, put it off screen, play. Keep your hair perfect. Bada bing, bada boom. And again, you obviously want to add your music. I can't do that right now because of copyright reasons. Your boy's trying to get paid. But that is how you use the narrator and that is how you find trending sounds that are going viral on TikTok. Now getting into how people screw up their TikTok ad and make a horrible one, usually the number one offense I see people do is trying to make a Facebook ad and repurpose it onto TikTok where they still have the same square dimensions even though TikTok is a phone app, it's nine 
by 16 you got to know your proportions here because if you have a square video and you have all of this empty real estate it just looks absolutely horrible having those black bars people just know okay ad alert this is not native content let me just keep on scrolling and you're trying your best to not seem like an imposter otherwise people are going to vote you out like among us so after you have created the ad it's properly proportioned the next real big thing that you can get wrong is always going to be the hook if you have a boring hook or you have a hook that's not relevant to your product or you're not even showing your product in the hook a lot of times that's going to be the death of your ad so even if you only have one video ad you can split test two three different hooks just change up the opening clip or change up the caption in that opening clip so again if i'm selling literally any product on planet earth even this freaking bobblehead i can say TikTok made me buy it or this is the perfect gift for your boyfriend or this bobblehead will change your life or if I just know what's the main benefit here what is the main problem that my target consumer has use that as one of your ad captions and those are just the generic examples if you really want to create a great hook then you need to know what is the biggest benefit or the biggest problem that my target customer has and they want to get solved through my product so for my waist trainer right here here's my hook getting your dream waist has never been easier that is what my target consumer is looking for and i split tested this over and over and over again i believe my first ads it was lose two to four inches off your waist in only 30 days or in record time something along that line now i'm going to try to mute this my editor will mute the music so let's see what i actually did over here it might be the same opening but we'll see All right, so I changed it. Instead of losing two to four inches, I did sculpt your sexy hourglass figure in only 30 days. And again, this is multiple ads. It's the same clips, it's the same music. The only thing I'm changing is just that opening line to see what is my audience resonating with the most? What is making them watch the ad more? Is it this headline or is it this headline? That's how you can make three to four ads for your product, even if you just have one ad. And a quick disclaimer before we get to our next part, don't have any exaggerated claims. Like right here, I got a little bit excited with this winning product with the claims because that's definitely very bold, say getting your hourglass figure in only 30 days. In fact, anything with a timeable, I would not have. Do not have a benefit with a timed result. It's just not good. Don't say in only seven days or only 30 days. Also, a few other things before I get to the next point. Don't have any cursing or background music that's heavy rap because it will get your ad rejected. Also, blurry clips will do the same thing. TikTok likes that high quality content. So do not have any reposted watermarks, blurry clips, anything like that will get rejected. So I would say my favorite places for getting custom content for your e-commerce brand, first off would have to be Billow. This is the cheapest place. So you can log in, make an account for free, and this is what the dashboard looks like. You have a typical video ad, testimonial, how to unboxing. Now, personally, my favorite are always unboxing videos. These do super well in TikTok ads. So we can just choose this right here. Let's go to our model type. So 30 seconds, $79. That's pretty cool with me. Let's scroll on down. So reveal the reason you decided to try. This is just your brand name. So Soundly is just a placeholder that I did here. So you can describe the main benefits so that the actual influencer knows what to film. What are the words gonna be? So you have complete control. So you obviously need to know what are the main benefits of your product? What do you wanna convey in these 30 seconds? Now, if we're scrolling down brand and product, I would say that's totally fine. Having a call to action is gonna be, okay, sign up now, all this stuff. I would say the main thing that you want is obviously making sure the brand and product are mentioned. So we'll scroll down. For TikTok, we want the nine by 16. Scrolling down here, do we want subtitles? Subtitles I don't think are really that important. Logo, you can add a logo, it's not that hard. Callouts, call to action, you can all edit this stuff. I don't think you really need that. Now for gender, you know your product better than anyone else. A lot of times female influencers do pretty well for e-commerce products, for apps and stuff. Males do a little bit better but you need to know what your target demo is because you want an influencer that fits your customer criteria so let's say i have my brand here that's selling waist trainers and this is typically for african-american girls they want to look good they want to snatch that waist a little so we're going to scroll down i would do this right here this is pretty much my target demo i would scroll down how many videos would you like to order for me just want to get one new video in for custom content 79 bucks i agree to these terms yada 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 you also need to fill out what's going to be the name of your product right here so you just put in your product name so let's say for instance i'm selling my waist trainer so we'll just scroll on here product description you can just copy this over so if i just did literally this should be fine 
just like that. Product name pronunciation. My slim waist product image. Okay, you can just upload something real quick. Product homepage, pretty simple. And then after that, you usually have your pick of the litter in terms of what creators that you wanna work with. Now, if you wanna save a little bit of money with Billow, what I would recommend doing is when you're messaging these influencers, say, hey, what's your Instagram? Then send them a message over there, negotiate through Instagram, and you're gonna save usually 10, 15, 20 dollars because Billow obviously takes a cut away from these creators and they wanna get paid in full. So negotiate off the platform, save yourself some money, make them more money, and you can develop a lot of great long-term relationships with influencers just by doing that. Now, the next way to get custom content is through Fiverr, a good old reliable Fiverr. If you look up something like brand ambassador or influencer for e-commerce brand, you'll get a lot of stuff like this right here. So we've got all these cool ambassadors, great looking young ladies that can promote your product. You just give them the script. So let's say our budget is like 60 bucks. We just want a video for 60 bucks. We'll give them a script, send them on over the product, yada, yada, yada. So let's just go with the first one right here. She's got 466 reviews, all five star, woof. So she takes photos, but can she do videos as well? 30 second promo video. Wow, you get photos and a 30 second promo for 55 bucks. That is an absolute steal, I'm not gonna lie. So she looks very cool, very nice. I mean, she looks like a popular influencer. There we go, showing off the product. She knows the trends, she's smiling, she looks good. Oh man, that looks like the sugar bear hair gummies. Definitely probably the biggest fraud in the history of e-commerce. And then finally, you can get custom content through the creator marketplace on TikTok. So this is a great way for scouting new influencers in your actual industry. So let's scroll down here. We got creator country or region. So let's go down. Let's try the United States because I'm an absolute patriot. I don't care about the state itself. Followers, I usually like to do the 10 to 100K range. You can usually find some good deals through here. Now, usually you can sort by the niche. So if we go to more filters, let's just scroll on down. There we go. So lifestyle, society, sports and outdoors. So if we have our fitness product or a beauty product, let's click beauty and fashion. Scroll down. We want the audience to be primarily female for selling a beauty product. There's not that many James Charles's out there. And then we'll scroll down, apply. And bada bing, bada boom. Look at all this. We got Lexi Poo. We got KP. We got Liv. All of these great people here. So we can start with $150 for a campaign. So for a post. So I would definitely reach out to everyone here because these are very business conscious influencers. They want to get brand deals. That's the only way they're here. And let's just sort this by our budget. So I would say going to more filters, price preference, I would do free products accepted as payments. That's very interesting. I wonder if there's actually anyone that does accept that. It's very rare. I'm curious though. I'm very curious. Can we really get a steal like that? Okay, so it doesn't seem to be that case. I think that filter is broken a little bit. I haven't played around too much. But real quick, 84,000 followers, $100? She'll make a video for us? Let's check out Rachel real quick. Let's see what she's all about. All right, so average views, bleh, not the greatest, but I mean, so for some custom content, that's not that bad. So let's see right here, female 82%, that's pretty solid. I would definitely love to test that out. And plus I get a piece of custom content for my website, for my ads, for testing. I mean, there's a lot of great things you can do here. So again, definitely feel free invite them, send them a message or find their social media or email and then say, hey, I found you on the TikTok Creator Center. I think you're really great. I would love to collaborate with you. Now, if you're a dropshipper and you don't want to buy your product and film content and be an influencer for a day, or you don't have the money to send it to other influencers, then your best bet is to find clips online of your product that are already out there on social. So if I was selling this bubble gun right now, the first thing I would do is scroll down, go through all of these different listings on Alibaba, and you'll see a lot of them have video content that we can use. We can get some good clips from these suppliers. So let's play this real quick. I mean, look at that. They got double dipping. It's a date out here. Great clip. Now, obviously, it's a little blurry because it's on Alibaba. Typically, when you download it, it's going to look a lot better. Now, if you're curious of how to download a video from Alibaba, you just right click, inspect. And then from here, you'll see a little URL once my honey notification gets the hell out of the way. All right. So let's get that. Here we go. So it's going to be this URL right quick, open a new tab, paste it. 
hopefully uh, we're gonna have to mute that because I don't want any copyright on the music. But you're gonna click save video as and then boom, that'll save to your folders. Now I would say 80% of the clips that we use in our ads when we're initially testing a product without using custom content is the clips on TikTok because these clips are super high quality. They already are disguised as TikToks because they are TikTok, so they work very well. I would actually recommend you find most of your clips from here. That's just what works the best. Obviously you do run the risk of third party infringement. It's not a good practice in the long term. But if you're trying to test the product out for a week, see if you're getting some sales, this is a great way of doing it. Finding clips from here. And if you're wondering again, how to get this video without the watermarks, you can use something very simple like ticksnap.com. You just copy the link of the TikTok. We'll go here to ticksnap, open it on up and, oh, it's SnapTick. Oh my God. I sound like a freaking boomer out here. It's you're on chat snap oh my god and then you download server just like that and that's how you get the TikTok without a watermark i would also go into aliexpress they got tons of videos like this one right here for this bubble gatling gun so again this should give you tons of inspiration this is a great video by the way super high quality so you would just obviously crop it make it 9 by 16 get a bunch of clips together put it in like a bit of a compilation styled ad where it's between 5 to 30 seconds it's super fast paced you're just hammering all the different benefits and your ad should look something like this people are going crazy over this bubble gun All right, so pushing aside TikTok ads because that's just one piece of this puzzle. You need to have basically everything aligned, working together as a unit if you want to have a successful business. And the next part outside of your TikTok ads is going to be your product and your website. So looking at this, my slim ways, again, I scaled it to 100 grand in two months. And the main reason why is because everything was dialed in. The conversion rate on the store, if I go here, let's uh, just go to my analytics. So if we do the first two months, I was running this brand from August 23rd, and let's just go to the next month. My conversion rate on this $35 product, if we go down here so you can see 100 grand in two months, it's 4%. That's super high, 13% add to cart ratio. Usually a brand, if it's at above 5% add to cart ratio, you're doing really good. And that just proves that my copywriting is great. I had a super amazing offer, I had urgency, and if I refresh, this will be a countdown timer that says three hours. But I believe because it's evergreen and I've been on the page for a certain amount of time. Yeah, it's not going to refresh, but usually it will. So I have urgency. I have great copy. I have graphics showcasing the product. I have reviews that talk about product quality that mention the name of the brand and also mention fast shipping. So those are the three main objections and three main key points that people are going to be looking for when they're reading reviews. They just want to know, does this product actually fulfill on the promises that they give? Is there fast shipping? And are they talking about this specific product? and not something else. So real quick, this slim waist helped me lose two inches off my waist. It came in and I've been wearing it for a week. It came in earlier than expected. So again, fast shipping, all of these reviews serve a purpose for me. And that's how I was able to get such an amazing conversion rate. So again, you need to have the store, you need to have the product page, everything dialed in. And the way you can do this is by first off, always split testing. I did not initially sell this product for $35.99. It was originally at $29.99. And I realized even if I raised the price, it doesn't make much of a dent on my conversion rate. In fact, I believe the first month it was at $29.99 and then the next month I had raised the price. So if I just go by October 1st to October 23rd, let's just see what happened here. What's my conversion rate? Okay, 3.3%, but you need to factor in that I'm making more money. My average order value is $41 compared to if we're doing the first month. So let's do August 23rd to September 23rd. What's my average order value looking like? 33 bucks. So it's definitely lower, but if I'm making more money, it justifies the means. And then obviously there's that famous motto where someone needs to see your product or brand seven times before they make that decision of buying. You saw with my brand about 15%, 13 to 15% of people added to cart. They liked my product. They showed a demonstration that they really want it, 
but only 4% had the means to buy it right now. So let me ask you something, cowboy. With those horses, are you just gonna let them run free? You're never gonna ever send them another email or SMS or show them another ad so that they can get those horseshoes that they know they need? No, 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 because you're an advanced marketer. So you need to have something like SMS Bump set up for sending abandoned cart reminder emails. So for me, this flow, I've only spent $124 on my brand and it has generated $9,000, a 7,000% return. So you can just see the value in this. And it still blows my mind because I do work with e-commerce brands that are doing 10 grand, 30 grand a month with my ad agency. And when I click and I check out the back end of their store, they don't have this set up, which frankly just makes my jaw drop and it just blows my mind because it's like, do you hate money? Do you not want to scale your brand? So when we set this up, this usually makes a huge difference in our conversion rate and actually making more money from every dollar spent on ads. And that's really the main goal. If we're going here, we also need to make sure we have email marketing set up. So for my brand, we did 108K in revenue and 9,000, about 10% of that came from email marketing. So this is free money. You just set up these campaigns, set up these flows, and boom, they just work for you. So if you want to make 10% more money with your brand, and sometimes with the bigger e-commerce brands, usually 30% of the revenue comes from email, you need to have your flows set up. All right, everyone, let's hop on back to our horses and boats and go back to TikTok Ad Manager Ville. Now, here I wanna talk about how to set up your columns and understand some key KPIs to understand if your ad is performing well or your Shopify store is the one carrying your brand. So when we're organizing our columns, just go to the right here, you'll see custom columns or default columns. You just click on that, then click on custom columns. Now this is the key things that I'm really looking for. I'm just gonna exit out of all this because we don't need it. So the first metric I'm looking for is total cost. I need to know how much I'm spending in each ad group, my campaign overall. That's a pretty basic metric. Now the next thing after that is gonna be my CPM because after I spend money, what happens? My ad gets shown to people, they're viewing it, they're viewing it as an impression. So impressions is the next step. So I'm gonna do impressions, then CPM. What's my cost to show my ad and get a thousand impressions? Is it $2 to get a thousand impressions? Is it $10? Usually with TikTok, it's gonna be under 10. Now after that, the next step is going to be someone's gonna view my ad, they're gonna click on it. So we're gonna do clicks, we're gonna do CPC, which is cost per clicks, then CTR. What's the percent of those people that click my ad out of 100? Is it 1%? Is it 2%? We don't know. So after that, the next step is going to be page events. So fairly simple. Someone's going to click onto my ad. They're going to view my page and they're going to decide if they want to add to cart or not. So we're going to do this. Then the next step will be complete payment. They don't have checkouts initiated on here like Facebook. So just go to complete payment, do total, do cost, total value so you know how much they bought and then for row ads just do total save it as a preset column for me because it's my agency account i do bod miami click on confirm and that's how we personally like to view all our columns so if i was hopping into this campaign right here that's 400 dollars a day so let's see what this bad boy was doing now obviously everything is an error and it hurts me to see this because it was so freaking profitable but when we're scrolling to the right, we can see these ad groups spend about $200 in this given day. If we scroll to the right here, the CPM on average is 586. That's pretty solid. Clicks here. If you're under 60 cents on your ad, your ad is doing its job. That's basically all you can ever ask for. At that point, if it's getting that much cheap eyeballs onto your website, your website needs to do its job. It needs to carry, it needs to get profitable conversions because with a winning product, that will be the case. The winning product should be able to carry you if your ads are getting results like that. CTR, I usually aim for 1.5%. This is slightly under it, but again, the CPC is a little more important for me. Uh, when I'm valuing if my ad performance is there. So I know my ad is performing, it's getting me traffic. That's the main job. Now the next step is going to be my website. So cost per ad to cart is about $3 for a $33 product, that's great. And then the final step is going to be measuring my ROAS. So my ROAS for this product was about 1.6. So we can see right here, all of these main ad groups were above that, at least for this given day. And overall, we had a 2.76 ROAS. So we know we're profitable and we have a decent amount of margin to play with. So we can scale these a lot 
further. Now, if you want KPIs for your website, like I mentioned earlier, the add to cart percent, I like to be at least 5%. Usually higher is going to be better. And if you want some KPIs for your website, I do recommend add to cart percentage of at least 5% for a winning product. And then for conversion rate, you usually want this to be at least 2%. All right, so let's get into how to determine if your campaign is profitable and you should start that scaling process. So for me, when I'm testing a product, I usually will let it run for about a day and spend $100 to know if this is profitable enough for me to go to the next steps. So on the first day of testing the slim waist, I spent $100. And if we go to the right, my ROAS was 9.8, very much well above my 1.8 break even ROAS. Now, for now, I think it's going to be slightly different. But how do we actually calculate what a break even ROAS is and why does it matter? So I'm going to open a calculator. But basically, your break even ROAS is the number you have to hit to not lose any money or not make any money. So if I am at a 1.8 ROAS for this product, I basically am at break even. I'm at zero dollars, but anything above that 1.8, I know is profitable money that's coming into my pocket. But any ad group or any campaign that's under that, I'm losing money. That money is going straight to TikTok and I'm never gonna see it again. So to calculate this number, you need to know what's your price that you're selling your product for. So for me, it's $35. And if it's under 1.8 or whatever my break even row is, is, I know that money is just being spent on TikTok and I'm never going to see it ever again. So when you're calculating your break even row as the formula is your price divided by parentheses, your price minus product costs, parentheses. I know PEMDAS very challenging, but let's do it right here. So we're selling my product for $35. The supplier cost is $8 27. Now I just divide the original price 35 by 27. So for this, because I did change the price, it's going to be 1.2. So actually right now, if I have any of my ad groups above 1.2 for this product, I'm going to be profitable and I'll be ready for scaling. Again, as you can see right here, the first day it got 30 purchases. That's very uncommon for a hundred dollars ad spend. I ain't going to lie to you. When I saw that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to quit YouTube. I'm going to quit making videos and I'm going to become a white male 20 year old who became a millionaire selling waist trainers to African American women. Who would have thought that's the American dream right there. But when we scroll to the right, we can see, I mean, these costs for purchases. This is when I knew, all right, Ethan, you're going all in with TikTok and you're going to build an ad agency around this because these results just I have never seen this with influencers and I've never seen this with Facebook ads. Now with influencers, I will typically have a golden goose influencer that gets me a 10 row as, but it's not really scalable because you can only run so many promos on that one account compared to with TikTok, they're just reaching more and more people that are already in these huge audiences. So for me right here, I usually will go into the next step of scaling once I get a decent amount of purchases. So I would say after the second day of testing, I had at least 50 purchases, which is definitely enough for breaking down and figuring out which segments we want to scale into. Alrighty, so on the second day, we broke that 50 purchase mark. Now, how do we actually figure out what we should do when we're scaling? Now, first off, I like to view the charts. So if we hover under any ad group, click on view data, we can see what are the commonalities. What are the common ages? What's the common gender of you're selling a product to multiple genders that are buying this product? So when we go to audience, let's break this down. I'm seeing that we're getting our best spend here pretty much in the younger 18 to 24, $2 a purchase. Oh, that's really good for 18 to 24. The next one older than 55, $5. And we're going over here, 45 to 54. I probably don't want to scale there because $13 a purchase. Same thing for 35 to 54. So if I'm really scaling this, I might just click 1824. I might do older than 55 and then I'm gonna do 25 to 34, but I'm going to exclude these two age groups because 35 to 54 they're already married they don't need to be really worrying about that waste but these younger women that are on the market they got to compete out here tinder is getting a little bit too competitive and then obviously for gender i mean you could play around with it but i know all my purchases are coming from females and then you can see a full breakdown right here of what is the best pocket of space where you can be spending your money and getting the best return so if i was really trying to scale this specific ad group what i would do is i would copy it on over create a new campaign. And again, the only thing I would change is just those ages. But before I do that, I would obviously click on view data on the other ones because I want to see the trends overall on a large scale, not just one ad group, because that could tell a whole different story. So let's go to audience again, do the same exact thing. Let's go down to age right quick. Alrighty. So we're seeing again, the same trends, 18 to 24, but these 35 to 54, not my audience. And then we're just seeing 18 to 24, 55 and older, 25, 34. 
that's where I'm maximizing my spend. And then if you go back to daily, you can see which one of your ads is performing the best. So if you have multiple ads, it'll tell you which ones are getting the conversion. So for me, I just had two ads when I was originally testing. And we can see if we scroll to the right here, what my ROAS is, what my CPA, I mean, my CPA is $2 over here. That's my cost for getting a purchase. So clearly this ad is the one that's winning at the moment. If we go back here to the left, yeah, 12 purchases compared to one. So that's how you can tell which ad is also performing the best. So if I analyze all of these different audiences and I figure out, okay, so the main ages I wanna hit are the 18 to about 35 and then 55 and up. I also wanna see, should I just run the main creative that's getting me all those purchases? So once I have all this data, I would say the first thing I did to scale this brand is I did duplicate all these audiences and I doubled the budget. But I've noticed recently that is a little bit volatile where sometimes when you do that, literally you just create a new campaign, you double the budget from 20 to 40 or 20 to 50. Sometimes TikTok just won't spend the money. But obviously I would recommend trying it out. Just see what happens because you never know what's gonna happen. And this is usually the best way to scale. Now that we know the different segments that we wanna scale into, again, you would just copy, let's make a new campaign. And I'm actually gonna do this live in front of you so you can see what it would look like. So I would do $50 a day as the name of the campaign. We click on duplicate for this audience real quick. And now that we know the segments, we're gonna go down here, click on continue. I'm not worried about a budget or anything like that. Just keep on doing the same exact thing. We're not gonna change the interest because that's a winning interest, but we know for the ages, 35 to 54, no go, not working for me. So we're gonna now increase the budget from 20 to 50, just like this. And again, whenever I'm duplicating an audience and upping the budget, I always give it its own separate campaign. So I'll have all of my ad groups that are at $50 a day in the $50 a day campaign. I'll have all of my $20 a day campaigns in the $20 a day campaign. So that way I just keep it organized. I know how much each is spending and it just makes your life a lot easier. Now, I also realized that with my two ads, the one that was performing the best was the first one. That was the one that had the 12 purchases compared to one. So I'll just delete the second one and just have my best ad creative running. There's no reason to spend money on a creative that is failing. And that's the whole purpose of split testing to see what works the best. And just like that, I would click on submit. But again, as I told you, that works about half the time. And the reason why is because with TikTok, there's a little bit of a phenomenon called audiences interfering. So if you have multiple of the same audience in different campaigns that all are spending with different budgets, the TikTok pixel is just so young and it's still trying to figure out things. It's right now in its teenage years and it doesn't know who it is yet that it sometimes just won't spend the money. It doesn't recognize all these different audiences. So a lot of times if you have a winning audience, you just need to increase the budget for that original one. So what I would recommend is let's go to default columns because real quick, we can't actually edit the budget from the columns that I made but you can see the budget that you have real quick. I recommend, and this is just what I've learned over time, of just doing subtle increases of about 20 to 30%. If you just straight up go from 20 to 40 like this, everything resets and a lot of times your CPA, your cost for getting a purchase, is going to increase dramatically. So I wouldn't do anything too crazy. What I would do, schedule this budget change to go the next day at midnight. So we know if I'm gonna publish this, it'll get approved tomorrow and then I'll make the daily budget 30. Now you're probably saying, Ethan, 20% of 20, that's $4, shouldn't it be 24? Well, with TikTok, you can only do incremental increases of at least 10 bucks. So if you do four, I'll just show you what happens. It'll give me an error. It'll say, yeah, no way, Jose. Yep, must be increased by a minimum of 10. So I would go from 20 to 30, just like that. And if it works, after two to three days, raise it to 40, keep it slow. With TikTok, you have to be more patient. You can't scale that aggressively like you can do on Facebook after you have a winner. So that's what I would recommend. After two to three days, don't do it every single day because again, it does reset and it can just be a complete nightmare and your ROAS can just decrease from eight all the way down to one if you're just changing everything up every single day. So after two to three days, it's been working, then change the budget by 20 to 30 percent so go from 20 to 30 30 to 40 i usually just do 10 dollar increment and that's the safe way of scaling and i understand it's not sexy it's not like an action movie it's arnold schwarzenegger and we're gonna go from 20 dollars a day to 2000 or 20,000 a day you can't do that you go from 20 to 30 30 to 40 and TikTok will spend the money. It's not too crazy of a change. You just have to be sensitive. You have to baby the pixel a little bit. So imagine the pixel is your little baby, okay? The next way you can scale is obviously, if you see right here, I have 15 ad groups in this one campaign, and that should give you a bit of an idea. 
when you have five ad groups that you're originally testing, usually two to three of those will be profitable if you have a winning product. So the next step is you need to find more interest, find more audiences that are profitable because those are more segments. Those are more people that you can reach out to when you're scaling. So instead of just saying, okay, I have two winning audiences. That's all I need. I'm never going to test anything else. Go and test different interests. So for here, I have beauty and personal care. I have talents as a secondary interest. And then here we go. I have travel as the main interest. I have clothing accessories as the main interest. I'm split testing a lot of different things because again, you don't know what works until you throw it at the wall. Now, another way of scaling after you have a winning campaign is doing some day parting. So again, we already covered this concept, but the way you can do it here, we see that we have five audiences that are insanely profitable. So I know that all of these are running all day because that's how I usually have it set up. But if I want to scale, what I can do is just duplicate all of these into a new campaign. And again, I'll just go through the whole process. We're going to copy this, go to a new campaign. We're going to title this day parted. And if you want to get super fancy with this, we can do a hybrid where we're also doing bid cap. And I know that sounds crazy. It's a lot of stuff at once. So if you guys have any questions about this, just feel free to hit me up on Instagram if you're trying this stuff out. I know it can be complicated, but you can reach out there, ask your questions, and I will respond to you. I'm going to be very active there. I'm always posting about my new findings and new things that we're split testing at my agency. But scrolling down real quick. Let's see what we got here. So let's go to day parted. So we already know what we like to do from six to midnight on every single day. We like to run our ads through these times. Now for Sunday, we do it to, I believe, 2.30, bada bing, bada boom, Saturday to around 4.30, and then Friday to 2.30, and then Sunday just to two. There we go. Now I need to drag this on out. And that's what it should look like. So you can just do like that. And then for the budget, I would recommend just doing $30, not going crazy. Do not double the budget. I just seen it with TikTok. It doesn't really respond very well to these crazy price changes. So just do that. Recreate all of your profitable audiences into a new campaign that's day parted and see how that performs against your original. But if you want to get super fancy and I'm talking some advanced media buyer skills, you're going to try doing cost cap now what is cost cap this is basically you telling TikTok, i want you to get me purchases for this amount this is how much i'm willing to bid to get a purchase i am willing to pay if we go right here four dollars to get a purchase of my product that's 35 dollars. i would recommend doing your break even as your original bid and a lot of times TikTok or facebook or whatever service you're using will get you purchases for under your bid cap. That's just really a suggestion. And you'll see these huge, amazing screenshots where people will get purchases for like 30 cents, 50 cents and their bid cap budget. I mean, what they were actually telling the algorithm is I want you to give me purchases for $10 or $20, but it's so smart that it can get purchases for under a dollar. So for this product, my break even is around $27. So what I would personally do is do $27 and I know TikTok is going to give me purchases for less. You can definitely do the suggested minimum bid. Now, the last thing I would do is make sure this number ends in the 33 or 77. This is something that's carried over from Facebook, where when you're doing cost cap, it just spends a lot better when the number ends in 33 or 77. It's a bit of a superstition, but if you test it, it does work better. And just like that, you can click save and you got that day parted bid cap campaign. I know you're getting pretty advanced. You went from a complete beginner that didn't know how to set up a campaign to you're doing day parted bid cap campaigns. That's pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. Now, the one problem you might face with doing bid cap and stuff like this is it just doesn't spend. So if that's the case, I would recommend raising your bid by two dollars. It's nothing too crazy. So you can do twenty nine, thirty three, thirty one, thirty three. I would get to your product price being the max bid that you're willing to have TikTok spend money for and find those purchases. So that's just my piece of advice. Uh, and then typically, if I'm really, really scaling, I'm willing to do 20% above my break even. So for this product, that would be around 27, 20% of 27 is 540. So yeah, I mean, it's around 33, 33. So around there would be my bid. And then you just click save and boom, you got your campaigns on. I mean, you went from a complete beginner that didn't know how to test campaigns to you're doing day parted, big cap, advanced hybrid segmenting, audience scaling, CBO. Oh my God, so many buzzwords, but you're basically doing it. Personally, with this brand, I would try to figure out what's sort of my goal. Like, what do I really want to get a purchase for? And for me, I would try to aim usually with every single client that joins my agency, a three ROAS. So for this product around a three ROAS is me getting a purchase 
for about $12 because I'm selling a product for 35. So around 12 is a third of that, AKA three ROAS. So I would probably do $12 as my initial bid, 1233, like this. Now, if it doesn't spend, again, we can do 20%, 10 to 20% above our target CPA of 1233. So for this, it would be around 13 to $14. So again, you can raise this over time and you'll still get some profitable purchases, but you really just wanna get it to spend and it will get you a lot of great purchases. Now, I am very happy to announce that one of my favorite methods of scaling on Facebook, the CBO, does carry over to TikTok. So once you have some winning audiences, I would recommend at least five plus profitable purchases. So you have audiences that are already profitable and they have five plus purchases. You can recreate them in a CBO campaign starting at $100 a day. And if it works, you can duplicate it. I would move the budget up to 150. So 50% is usually my incremental increase. And then just keep on doing that over and over again after two days. I wouldn't do it every single day. Again, TikTok, the pixel is just a little more sensitive. You need to baby it. So what you would do is you have to recreate the audiences. You can't just duplicate your winning audiences into a new campaign. So we're just gonna click on create real quick. If TikTok would let me, holy gazolies. Then obviously you click on conversions, click on it again scroll on down and then we're going to turn on cbo just like this do a hundred dollars and again you'll just create all of your different audiences that are already profitable all right so before we get into this last scaling strategy i do need to warn you that this is only being done by the top 0.001 percent e-commerce brands that are scaling the crap out of tiktok ads and really frankly the only reason why i know this stuff is because I'm a celebrity internet micro niche influencer dropshipping TikTok ad wizard. And I don't know if you're ready for this, but I'm ready to unveil the sauce. So this is gonna be really advanced. You're gonna click on conversions. Now, if you have a winning audience like I had that is incredibly profitable, this is what you can do. Now, I would preface this that you need to be at at least $1,000 a day before trying a strategy this ballsy. But if you are there, you have a proven product that you believe in and you have an audience that has at least 20 purchases, then you can try this out. So scrolling down, you're gonna obviously select your pixel, select complete payment, yada, yada, yada. You already know the drill here, but it's gonna get a little bit freaky deaky. So for placement, we're always gonna do TikTok. We already know this, we know the drill. And let's go down to user comment. We can turn this off, video download, turn this off. Now for our location, just recreate your winning audience. So if it's United States or if it's Canada, or if it's freaking Bulgaria, then you're gonna do Bulgaria. For gender, uh, Again, this depends on your product. So let's just leave this blank for now because you just know what's gonna be it for your product. And then select the interest that was your winning audience because you're just recreating it. Now, the only thing you're gonna change here is the daily budget's gonna be $1,000. Now, personally, I did not come up with this method on my own. I learned this from Frankie Shaw, who's done over 50 million in e-commerce and dropshipping sales. He's one of the GOATs, top tier of media buying. Now, this strategy involves for $1,000, you're gonna spend this budget usually in a one hour to an hour and a half window. And it's based off a Stanford study where they basically surveyed about 5,000 to 50,000 people. And they were seeing when are they buying the most? What are the best windows where people are purchasing items? And they found out that around eight to 9.30 a.m., a lot of people are making that first purchase, whether it's a coffee, donut, breakfast, something like that. Then the next window is typically during their lunch break, 12 to 1 p.m. of whatever time zone. Then after that, they usually get off of work around 5 p.m. You know, you're working your nine to five and that's when we're browsing on our phone, we're checking Instagram, we're checking TikTok and we're buying stuff. And then the final window is from nine to 11. So right before bed, we're usually on our phones. We like to say that we're decompressing and we're reading a book 30 minutes before bed and we're unplugging. None of us are actually doing that. We're watching TikToks, we're watching Netflix, and we're seeing ads for products. And we're like, okay, you know what, whatever, I'm gonna spoil myself a little bit. I'm gonna buy that $30 waist trainer. So how this method works is you recreate your audience, show them the best creative, and then you're gonna day part it like this. So let's say uh, today's Wednesday, then I would have this run for Thursday. And then the first window would be from eight to 9.30. It's crazy but that's literally the only window you do. And now obviously make sure all three are selected just like that. Then click on next, you publish it, and you better wake up at 7.30 a.m. and monitor this as soon as it starts spending because it's gonna be insane. But there's one final thing you need to do and that's have a cost cap. 
So I already covered my cost cap strategy. You wanna come up with what's your target cost per purchase? You obviously don't wanna do your break even because you wanna make money. So let's say for my brand or selling that $35 product, I wanna have my target cost per purchase at 1233. Now, after you tell TikTok what your bid's gonna be, the final thing you need to do is click on view more scrolling down and accelerate that budget have it spend rapidly i'm talking 50 dollars a minute and as soon as this gets approved and it's spending money you need to be monitoring your TikTok. you need to be monitoring your shopify seeing the sales because it will go through so much money and you need to know hey do i need to kill this right now or can i let this run and just watch the sales keep on coming in it's incredibly aggressive I've never tried it before, but this is something I've learned from one of the goats. So I'm just gonna spread it onto you for you to try it out and see if it works for yourself. Now, if it isn't spending money, what Frankie recommends is increasing the budget by $2 until you reach your break even bid. So I know for me, $27 is break even. So I would do 14, wait a few minutes. If it doesn't spend 16, 18, 20. And when I get to 26, 33 if it's not spending money then i would just delete the campaign and not even worry about this strategy because there's so many better strategies of really scaling but you can try it again during the next time window and see what happens if it doesn't contact tiktok support and see what they say all right guys it is way past my bedtime and that is every conceivable method that i have ever learned and i'm trying right now to scale my e-commerce brand so i hope that helped you out and if you have any questions feel free to reach out on instagram